Hello and welcome to this V3 video. I'm Madeleine Bennett, editor of V3, and today I'm joined by Iwana from Big Step to discuss a new generation of high performance cloud computing services and how these will power the next advances in big data. Hi Iwana, thanks very much for joining us today. Hi Madeleine, it's great to be here. Good, so, um, so Big Step, you're aiming to offer businesses the highest performance cloud. Can you uh, first off tell us a little bit about what that is and why firms should want it? Okay, so uh, we know that saying that we're the highest performance cloud, uh, at least public cloud, is a daring proposition, so we're more than happy to put some context around it. So I think the main advances that we made are at the processing level, uh, network level, and storage level. And what we, have for pro we have, what we have done for processing is that we have completely eliminated the hypervisor. And this means that there's no extra layer in between the applications and the hardware. And for that, in the case of big data applications, and a large workloads, you get 20%, but sometimes 50 or 100% increases in performance. So Redis, for instance, say on their website that you can get twice as much performance from running Redis on bare metal compared to a VM. So um, this is, in terms of processing, this is all all good and well, but then it comes down to the networking part and to the storage part, because if you can't get information into the machine, then <laughs> where are you going to process, right? So um, in terms of the networking, we have added a lot more connectivity that you currently get with a typical cloud at the machine level. So you can get 4 to 44 gigabits connectivity per machine, which is much more compared to like 100 megabit or 1 gigabit or even the 10 gigabits that you get right now for like the best cloud instances out there. And um, it's not just that, but networking is all done at wire speed. So clients have a, an isolated layer two domain that they can use, which means that it's the lowest possible network latency that you can get in a cloud right now. And that works really well because you can connect that uh, high network capacity to the storage. And instead of using a single centralized storage device where that all machines connect to, which can mean you have a single point of failure or a single bottleneck, we spread out our storages across the network so that you have multiple SSD storages. And the storage is all SSD. So this means that you have traffic flowing freely through the network without any single point of failure. It's spread out. And the reads and writes happen at tremendous speeds because it's SSD coupled with great network capacity. So this is something that works really well for big data that needs amazing throughput. And uh, what we get is people doubt that you can get this type of uh, bare metal infrastructure, uh, but still get it as a cloud. So uh, what I want to stress is that you still get the flexibility of the cloud. So it's self-service, it's paper use and the provisioning happens instantly. So you can clone, you can migrate, you can upgrade or downgrade machines in seconds, or you can power up uh, machines in seconds. So it's all actually bare metal performance with the flexibility of the cloud. Okay, so um, it sounds a really interesting proposition, but which types of industry sector, which firms are you aiming at this at? Well, first of all, it's big data, as you already said. Uh, it makes sense because applications like Hadoop or NoSQL databases are very power hungry, and that's where you're going to see the most advancements in performance. Um, as secondary markets or as, um, I don't know, a way of growing into the future, we're thinking about uh, gaming mar the gaming market because um, right now gaming has let's say, smaller incremental revenue. So you look at the App Store, right? You have 99 cents per application, and then that application has to run for years, possibly. Uh, but you also need to provide a great experience for that 99 cents. You need really low latency. You need the game to be very responsive. So you need high performance. And at the same time, we're looking to the video and audio processing industries because for video rendering, for instance, you need a lot of, uh, a lot of processing capability, but it's a fluctuating workload, so you don't constantly render video. So these are two markets that might be an um, um, extension point for us in the future. So I think there's, um, yeah, there's clear benefits for firms to be had from uh, big data. But um, and, you, know, you mentioned markets like video, mobile app developers, and obviously like financial services firms who are able to um, you know, grow their investments in it. But aren't these firms just better doing this sort of high level number crunching and analytics on their existing infrastructure? Well, of course you can do that, So, but 
for existing infrastructure to be a good model, you need to have a predictable constant workload because otherwise that infrastructure just sits over there and eats up power and you're not using it for anything. And also, if you want to start doing a big data project, most likely you're not going to have all the infrastructure you need up front. So you're still going to need to do a pilot or a test somewhere. And the cloud model is really good for that because you get on-demand infrastructures, uh, you test, you see if you, can, if you can get answers to the questions that you have, and then you can continue. And if from there, the workload that you estimate is predictable, of course, you can get, uh, get in-house infrastructures. Uh, but as long as you can get performance and consist consistency, uh, and still keep the management uh, outsourced so that you don't have to bother with hundreds of servers because for big data we're talking about hundreds and thousands of servers. I still think that outsourcing and using a cloud model can be a very good option for these companies. Okay. And doesn't um, virtualization give firms all the resources they need? Well, of course it can if uh, you have enough money to spend on it because the key thing with virtualization for big data is that uh, it introduces a lot a loss in performance so if you really don't care about money of course you can use virtualization but if you want to keep your costs predictable and reasonable uh, you're much better off using bare metal okay and um, cloud computing has become the norm for certain applications i think most firms now will probably have some of their data in the cloud somewhere along the line um, but obviously security and data privacy remain concerns for firms um, when they're using cloud services what's the, what's the best way for firms to ensure that the data they have in the cloud is safe well i think the key thing is to always encrypt your data so that's a level of security of security that you can't beat but there's also, there are also some advancements that the provider can make. So for instance, what we do is, uh, unlike like most clouds, we provide single tenant hardware. So there's nobody sharing that machine with you. Your information uh, only goes to, the, this, to your server and, and not to others, and it's not moved around the network. And the network is completely isolated. You have your own layer two domain. So there's much better isolation in between clients than on a typical cloud. And also, if you want an extra layer of privacy, because our infrastructure is bare metal, you can add a hypervisor on top of it. And you can all build your own private cloud, but still have scalability in terms of the hardware. So you have a scalable private cloud, which is a great model for enterprises that want data security. And it's not something that's actually tailored to the big data market. Uh, it can be very well used by uh, enterprises that are trying to get out of their existing data center that maybe don't have a room in their data room anymore or don't want to in invest in a TIN anymore. Um, so there are advancements that the vendor can make, but nothing beats, encrypti beats encrypting your own data. Okay, so obviously um, that's a big plus for Big Step because security, you know, getting over the security hurdle um, with, with cloud services is a great thing. Are there, um, are there any other benefits that you'd say Big Step, over, Big Step offers over other infrastructure service providers like Amazon Web Services? I'd say that where our strong point really is in the performance. So we, we're not aiming to be everything for everybody. You can use this, uh, this infrastructure for many tasks, but where it really shines is big data and performance because um, when you have access to bare metal hardware and when you have the type of network and storage architecture that we have put together, you really get amazing throughput. So we're not going to be, definitely not going to be uh, better than just any cloud for any task, but for big data applications and for large workloads, I think we should be the best choice. I think Hadoop will just love this infrastructure. Okay. Well, thanks very much for joining us today, Iwana. Oh, thank you. And uh, thanks very much for watching.